everybody. It's Tyler here at the World Championships. Check in. 6,800 Valor coming out of Texas. A phenomenal team. One of these teams, if you've been watching the last few years, you know Valor has been really on the rise. And this season, I think, is a great amalgamation of what this team has become. A little rough start in the beginning, but continual improvement has gotten better and better and better. And actually, as we're filming this right now, number two seed in their division. Uh, so an excellent performance for that. Valor, a lot to talk about with this robot. Of course, we'll be going through a lot of different iterations, changes. And that's really what we're going to be focusing on is what this team has changed, how they've gotten better, how that continued process improvement has really made Valor a great robot here so far. So, of course, we're talking about different areas like their shooter, their climber, talking about some stuff in regards to software and so much more. So let's learn about Valor here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Tommy, let's start talking about changes on your robot while you've gone through. So walk me through on your chassis, what kind of changes you made, talk to me a little bit more about the design as well. Yeah, so I don't know if you kept up with this last year, but we decided to go with a really small chassis. Last year we had a 23 by 23 inch chassis, which made our robot tip over way more than we'd like it to. So this year we decided to go with a 28 by 28 chassis. This allowed us to have a lot of space on the inside of our robot, as well as work reliably and robustly on the field. We had a low, we have a low center of gravity. We don't tip over. We are great on the field. We are, we try to be as advantageous as possible. With our motors this year, we've decided to invert them. And we also use completely different motors on our drivetrain. We started using Krakens this year, which is completely new, um, which is super exciting. We also changed our wheels that we've been using. We use the new VEX wheels that came out. And yeah, so those are most of the changes that we've made to the chassis. It's completely different than what we went with last year because we realized that we had a lot of problems tipping and we didn't want to be that robot this year. So you seem pretty happy with those changes so far this we year? We are so happy with those changes. Our chassis is one of the things that we've kept the most consistent throughout the entire year. Even though, I don't know if you have kept up, from Waco, we are a completely different robot. Yeah, very much so. It's been cool to see that continue uh, process you've gone through mm -hmm. as well. Rabel, let's talk about intake and uh, how your intake uh, functions so far. Talk to me about uh, why did you choose the design that you have? Uh, and of course, any changes with that as well too. So at Waco, we had a four roller intake, which we wanted to be able to intake from the front and the back of the robot because we knew this would be a very high speed game and we wanted to be super efficient. But we realized that our four intake roller, four roller intake was not super advantageous on the field. So we, from Waco to San Antonio, we switched to a seven roller intake. Okay. And now we have an 18 inch acquisition area so we can pick up, it's a touch and go intake from the front to the back of the robot. So it's super accurate and efficient. And we use Rev, uh, we use Neos. Gotcha. Can we see a note actually come in like where that intake is? So we'll be talking about some more areas on this. When you're looking at those changes with adding more rollers, like what changes, to, like what actually happened when you added more rollers? Like what was the end effect of that? Um, we were able to intake like a lot more efficiently and yeah so basically from the front and the back we were able to intake now previously at Waco we were only intaking from the front of our robot which oh, didn't okay. allow for, for like obviously touch and go intake so that so by changing it to five so it's five spanning the 18 inch area under our robot and they're 18 inches wide to pick up the note as it comes in so now it's touch and go so you, from the front or the back, as soon as we roll over, it's up in our feeder. And Sambi, we've seen the uh, note now go into the shooter. So let's talk more about uh, what your shooter's comprised of and any big changes you made with that also. Yeah, so after our note is intaked, as you just saw, it's into our shooter. And our shooter actually changed a lot from Waco and San Antonio. At Waco and San Antonio, the pivot of our shooter was at the bottom of our robot. So it only allowed for our shooter to pivot upwards. Gotcha. Um, and it was like at a limited angle. But after San Antonio, we changed our pivot to be um, higher up on our robot. So this means our shooter can actually pivot all like 180 degrees. So it can shoot front and back. And um, we can actually change the shooter angle to match the um, feeder angle for the amp. So it actually is a really accurate amp shot. Yeah, so you can like match that amp shot exactly. And our shooter actually doubles as a speaker and an amp mechanism. So that's also a great part about it. Um, 
We also build our speaker so it's really advantageous to the field so it can actually shoot over robots that are at maximum height and that's really great for our defense. So, awesome. Yeah. Pearl, can you talk a little bit more about, uh, let's demo how some of your different shots work and just be walk me through and narrate what's happening with your robot. Yeah, so this is its resting position right now. With, uh, we call this the intake position because our intake directly feeds through the feeder wheels into the shooter. And then we have a couple of set points, which uh, we saw, saw just now, it's the amp. So it, this directly shoots out. Uh, we decided we wanted, we really wanted to power down onto the amp with the amount of inconsistencies and field damages. We also have what we call an orbit shot. It's a, a shuttling shot that's dynamic. So uh, it reads where we are on the field using odometry, and then it determines how fast our flywheels should spin and also how much our robot should rotate to um, land a node right in the amp or right near the amp area. We also have a reverse shot for defense, as um, Tom, uh, Savi was talking about. And uh... so this shoots off the back flywheel rollers, and the whole chassis will rotate. Yeah, I love having the different shot positions you've gone through, and that big changes definitely proving good dividends for your team as well, too. So, Tommy, you're talking about the uh, climbing mechanism, what's gone into that? Yeah, so initially at Waco, we had a climbing mechanism that was a that had two hooks on it, and it was a one-stage climber. But we realized that was inefficient, and we only ended up climbing once at Waco. Then between the two weeks that we had between Waco and San Antonio, we just completely just scrapped our climber. We sure. had our climber CAD person working on for over a month on the version of the climber that we have now. Now, this climber we implemented right before states, so this climber has been extremely efficient. It is a two-stage elevator, and it has two um, West Coast product, great, great telescopic pla um, bearing plates that help it go up, and then it has a Dyneema cable that runs through the climber that allows it to carry a load of over 1,800 pounds. So it also is uses a, um, what's it called? a servo at the bottom that latches and unlatches, which, which is what controls the um, cable from going up and down and it also it's basically on a ratchet and prowl so I can ratchet it back down after every match to reset it. Um, is your team doing anything currently with the trap right now at all? We do not do trap. We've decided that that's not something that we were yeah, and, and obviously your team's still doing great here at championships, mm -hmm. right? So trap is great for some teams. Rotates might not be the best route for them as well and still working out great for your team so far for sure. So as we wrap up in this, Stas, talk to me about some of the programming that's gone into your robot here. Uh, how are you doing anything from localizing to any sensors or cameras you want to mention as well? Yeah. So one of the coolest pieces of software that we have this year is these Lime Lights. We have four total, one here, one here, then two around the sides here. These two, uh, these are a two plus, two plus, and these two Lime Lights are the Lime Light 3G. The, the, these are the newest model they have, and we are one of the first teams in the world, in Texas and in the world to actually use them. Sure. We were, uh, I think, the first team in the world to use them at our DCMP. We use, uh, we use these Lime Lights for localization during auto, but also we use these two Lime Lights to uh, li uh, line up our pivot for our shot, right? This one, uh, we can see this one for the, our normal shot. We can figure out where we, how far we are from the able tag, which is right next to the speaker. And we can pivot, our, our, we can pivot it appropriately. Then we use this one for when we're shooting off the back. Allows us to uh, essentially shoot whether uh, when we're playing uh, into defense or we're just uh, where we have an open shot. Uh, next, we're actually working on the software. This is, I would say, Valerie's year of the guru, right? We have uh, two new cool pieces of software that we're using. This first one is called Advantage Scope. It's de uh, developed by Mechanical Advantage. Uh, it's really cool. It's just, it's a piece of grabbing software that lets you uh, log, log stuff during your matches, and then you can plot them. Uh, you can plot what happened during matches. For example, this, la uh, this log is what happened during a last match. And then if I go over to auto here, I can see what auto was doing. I can see, hey, a robot wasn't quite keeping up with what it was trying to do. Maybe I need to slow this thing down. Yeah. Uh, for our auto development, we, act, we also use a piece of software called Path Planner. Uh, sorry, Jansen, I don't remember what team you're from, but Mr. Jansen, he made the software with his, along with his team, and it lets you visually build out paths. Super cool because it lets you reuse these paths. For example, I have this auto here. Let's say our teammate, for, for whatever reason, wants to grab this piece. Hey, I can go in here, and I can go ahead and remove it. Boom. Now we're not touching our teammates. We just do these two. Super modular, super cool, easy to, easy to reiterate. We've made like 
we made half of our autos during the comp because we had this piece of software to help us make it. Yeah, and it's Ranger Robotics 3015 who's yeah. done a lot with that. I got to ask you before we wrap up on your coming to the championships, any major changes to the autos or how have you approached autos? Because we're seeing that race obviously to the center so yeah. much quicker. Some teams doing anti autos as well, too, right? Yeah. How has that changed for uh, 6800? Uh, going to championships, one of the big, uh, we have started focusing much more on this mid, uh, of getting to midfield as fast as possible. We're still fo uh, on this side, on the amp side, we're still focused on hitting that preload. We don't see uh, Zone Series going to drop in this early. Uh, but going to championships, we're also, uh, we're also looking at using dynamic replanning, where we essentially we look at if we have a piece in the bot. If so, we go back to our normal shooting spot. If not, then we keep on going until we hit a piece. Well, 6800, congratulations on a great season so far, but continuing to improve, continue to get better as well. So we can't wait to see how you all do, of course, here in your division. Good luck here at championships. And thanks for telling us more about your bot. Congratulations on this continued success you've had so far. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.